As I promised you at the top of the show, I said Pierre Lebrun would be on the show, and sure enough, I delivered. Here he is, our hockey insider extraordinaire. And Pierre, breaking news on Thursday night, the Leafs, a uh, couple of defensive injury issues in their win over the Coyotes. They miss out on Chris Tanev. Brad Tree Living gets right to work after that win over the Yotes, and he acquires, reacquires, I suppose you could say, Ilya Labushkin. How did this all come together for the Leafs in the last 24 hours? Yeah, well, I guess you could say the Leafs reacquired Libushkin, although it wasn't Brad Treliving who was in the chair for the Leafs the last time they got him. That was Kyle Dubas. But I guess he had enough people still lying around that Leafs front office saying, hey, that guy was pretty good for us a couple of years ago. Um, and, you know, Jay, you've heard us mention Libushkin's, uh, Libushkin's name connected to the Leafs before in insider trading over the course of the last few weeks. He was always on Toronto's radar. He just wasn't number one. Don't know if they'll come out and admit that. Um, because they were all in on Chris Tanev. And once Chris Tanev was dealt, and this is what happens this time of year, there's a domino effect. Clearly, they uh, zeroed in on, on Labushkin. And again, a right-hand shot, rugged, physical defender. Uh, that was um, what the Leafs had been looking for. It's what they would have gotten Tanev, but they got a version of it now in, in, in Labushkin. And I will also say that you know, obviously, the price is right. I mean, the Leafs end up giving up a third-round pick to Anaheim in this three-team deal, sixth-round pick to Carolina, who the Hurricanes, you know, they're trying to win their own cup, but they got time to do some salary retention on the side <laughs> here a week from the trade deadline, and they get involved in this. And and the Leafs, you know, give up a couple of middling picks and also get uh, Labushkin 75% salary retention. Uh, it's pretty tidy work by the Leafs. I don't think Toronto is done. But uh, but at least now they, they get their uh, their defense upgrade, which they've really been looking for all year. So you say you don't think Toronto is done. Uh, what else do you think Brad Tree Living might be focusing on? Is he done focusing on defense or does he still have some work to do there? I'm not sure that he's done looking on defense. He might be, but I think he'll still look out there and see if, if there's perhaps something else he can do there. Um, and I also think... Uh, you know, uh, some poor depth as well. So I don't think the Leafs are done tinkering. Uh, it certainly takes some pressure off Brad Tree Living because this was really the biggest priority to find a physical right shot defender. Remember, they dressed six lefties this week. Um, and so that was key. But um, but certainly I don't think the Leafs are done if, if they have their way. So let's go back to that Tanev deal, Pierre, uh, from Wednesday night. And I think some people were just surprised about the fact that, you know, you guys on Insider Trading have been talking about Tanev all season. We assumed there were many, many teams in on his services. And yet, Craig Conroy, the GM of the Flames, still does not get a first-round pick. Were you surprised about that? Well, yes and no. So, number one, there were a lot of teams in on Tanev. In fact, at one point, a dozen teams had shown interest in Chris Tanev over the past couple months. Um, obviously, that list got narrowed down. Number one, I'm told the Flames did actually have a trade offer with a first-round pick on the table, but that offer, I'm told, had a player attached to it. The, the Flames were going to have to take a contract back that had turned past this year, and that just didn't work for them for where they are. And so you get that. When they look at the Dallas deal, they saw what they view basically as the value of two second round picks and an actual second round pick and obviously the prospect that they really like who they feel as tan of like attributes. So that was more appealing to them. And, and listen, there were certainly some teams that felt that if Calgary had waited perhaps into next week, that maybe they would have got a clean first, not the first round pick with something attached to it. But it was important, Jay, that, you know, Calgary didn't want to end up next Thursday and Friday with both Tanev and Noah Hannafin both still needing to be dealt, and we'll get to Hannafin later. But and so the staggering of, of, of these trades was important to Calgary as well. And a final thing, um, you know, what you love about Chris Tanev is also what makes you nervous when you were Calgary here over the last week or two, that he, the guy would block a shot with his face if you had to, to win a game. He's yep. a warrior. Yep. But the Flames front office were holding their breath every time he played in the last couple of weeks. So they, they couldn't take that injury risk anymore either. At the end of the day, listen, the Leafs were in there, and there was another conversation between the Leafs and the Flames on Wednesday before the deal got done with Dallas, but the Leafs not willing to give up their first-round pick for Tanev. Edmonton was in there. Vancouver was in there. 
uh, and the Colorado Avalanche sneakily were in there too on Tanev, but Dallas gets their man. And you alluded to the fact, oh, before we get to the next question, here we go. There we go, we got rid of that one. There's still, <laughs> <laughs> there's still one big domino to fall in Calgary. Uh, Noah Hannafin, number one on our trade bait board. You alluded to it, and CJ, you know, mentioned yesterday on the show, Pierre, you know, Boston's kicked tires. We know about the Tampa interest. You guys have talked about that extensively. What's the latest on the Hannafin front? Yeah, I mean, listen, certainly Tampa and Boston continue to have interest. You know, the problem with both those teams is neither one of them has a first-round pick this year, Jay. So that's not ideal for Calgary. Um, Interestingly, too, and listen, the, the list of teams is longer than just two. There, there are several teams that continue to call Calgary on them. But as of Thursday, and you know how quickly the info changes this time of year, but all I can tell you is as of Thursday, the indications that we're getting out of Calgary was that they were not really close on a Hannafin deal, that there was still a lot of work to be done here and sort of, you know, feeling out the markets and the offer. Um, and, you know, part of that, I wonder, you know, Hannafin's a left shot D, there's so much interest right now in the trade market for right shot D. We just saw two right shot D traded in w within 24 hours. Um, so how much of that is into it? But there are other things. I mean, Hannafin has a modified no trade clause, so he gets to pick to some degree where he can go. Uh, Pat Brisson, the agent for Noah Hannafin, has talked to some teams about, you know, uh, whether an extension is possible as part of this, which, by the way, would be good for Calgary because if he signed as part of this, they should get more in a trade. So... It's a more complicated deal than Tanev, I guess, is what I'm getting to. And I think they may need all of next week to get it done. And let's stay with Calgary for one more. Jake Markstrom. He's been as high as number two on our trade bait board, Pierre. He's dropped to 10 this week. Is that an indication that the market's a bit muddied up? Or is it an indication that perhaps Jake Markstrom sticks around in Calgary for a little while? Yeah, it's an indication of a couple of things. In general, the goalie market has actually gone a little colder of late. It doesn't mean there won't be goalies moved. But, you know, for example, teams like Caroline and Edmonton feel good about their goaltending now, so they're, they're not in on the goalie market. The Devils still need a goalie upgrade. And the thing is, you know, my understanding is that New Jersey did phone Calgary again this week, a couple of days ago. Uh, and what I hear is they told the Flames, hey, by the way, we know, you know, we couldn't get a deal done a couple of weeks ago on Markstrom, but we're still interested, if you're still interested in renewing that discussion. And so that happened a few days ago, I'm told. I think New Jersey would still trade for Jacob Markstrom if Calgary was willing to go back down that road. But I think to some degree, now that the Flames have traded Tanev and, of course, they traded Lindholm early this year, they're kind of staying on the periphery of this race. I don't know how real it is, but I think there's some concern in that Calgary front office if we trade our MVP, which Markstrom really has been, how deflating that would be. You know, trying to find that balance between we need to sell our UFAs, but but still try to hang in there, you know. Um, but I would keep an eye on it because I think New Jersey is willing to make that trade between now and next Friday. Um, if they don't, I think it's something both teams revisit come the offseason. I sure hope they decide to wait until exactly next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're begging for at James this point. Duffy. Exactly. For James's yeah. sake. Hey, quickly, Elias Pettersson, uh, we talked to CJ about it yesterday. Uh, some reports out there that, that he could actually be getting close to an extension with the Vancouver Canucks. What's the latest on that? Yeah. Um, you know, the most important thing that's happened this week is that there has finally been real contract talks between the two sides. I mean, as you know, I mean, I mean, Pedersen himself throughout the season has said that he, w he would prefer to wait until after the year was over. But the Canucks really, 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 really wanted to get going on this. <laughs> um, so there was certainly pressure there um, from the Canucks uh, to his camp, led by Pat Brisson and J.P. Berry, the two agents for Pedersen to finally get going on this. And they did this week. Whether they did because suddenly there were trade rumors last weekend, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but uh, but they are in dialogue. There has been progress. Um, it's hard as of right now to gauge exactly when this might get done. Um, you know, I, I think 
there's still some remaining obstacles. I think term could be part of that. I mean, this could be a five-year deal. It could be an eight-year deal. I, I think there's different options on term, Jay. But, um, you know, this could be done if it all goes well by the end of the week, but it also could take a couple of weeks. It could also go to the summer, I was told today. So still up in the air as for when exactly this gets done, but the two sides are talking, which is, I would think, pretty good news if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan. I'd say so. Um, man, uh, it's starting to get fun, starting to get exciting. Are you getting excited, Pierre? It feels exciting now. I'm so excited. Oh, don't, don't get me singing now, Jay. God, like, Come on. What are you like, doing? You are one of the Pointer sisters today. May, maybe, maybe <laughs> just in spirit, you, because you do have a beautiful voice. And we'll hear more of it on Trade Center. My, my understanding is all the insiders are going to be singing. Uh, so looking forward to that, buddy. Thanks for this. Right on, right on. It's going to be a great show. I cannot wait. And it's presented by Harvey's. It's Canada's number one trade deadline show. It's Trade Center. It's a week from today.